Jeg er sammen med en spørsmål på. Men vi har noe dope, eller? Er det det du behøver? Hæ? 120 milligram, allting. Ok? This is dope. This is not the life I recommend for no one. But here in Denmark, your government is more liberal in that way that places like this makes it more controlled. I'm at the heart of Copenhagen's drug scene in the area of Estopon. Behind me is one of the world's largest legal drug intake facilities called H17. Inside, they have 24 rooms where users can inject or smoke their drugs, which happens roughly around 700 times a day. Denmark introduced these drug consumption venues in 2012, and they have special areas surrounding them where you won't get arrested for drug possession if it's for your own personal use. These kinds of drug consumption rooms, known as DCRs, are government-funded venues where illicit drugs can be used under the supervision of trained staff. The first DCR opened in 1986 in Bern, Switzerland, in response to rising HIV infections and drug-related deaths. In the years to follow, DCRs opened in nine European countries. Now Portugal, Mexico, Ireland, the UK and Romania are considering opening them. However, in Denmark, this liberal policy has had an unexpected consequence. An influx of heroin users from neighboring Sweden where there's a zero-tolerance drug policy. There are around 50 to 100 Swedish drug users in Copenhagen at any given time. Some commute, others, like Chris, have moved here, even if it means sleeping rough. What was your life like before you, you became homeless? Um, I, uh, I had a very good life. I worked in buildings, you know, build uh, new houses. I worked there for maybe 10 years. After that, yeah, I had a good course. After that, it's, it's just whew, down there. Sell the car or move from the apartment. I couldn't pay the bills. Everything was just gone. So I, uh, <laughs> I get out of there. You took off? Yeah, I took off. Chris has been homeless on the streets of Copenhagen for six years now. I met uh, some other Swedish guys, and uh, we are very good friends now. I do this thing uh, to go to age 17. Uh, okay, I'm an addict. I'm waiting for Patrick, who just left with the drug dealer. When he returns, we'll enter age 17. While we're waiting to enter, Patrick shares his drugs with a Swedish friend. Men vill du ha dope eller inte? Du kan inte vara med på den när vi sitter där inne, nej. Det går inte. Nej, men kan jag inte börja? Jag vill. Här, vill, vill du ha dope eller? Öppna handen då istället. Vad har du med dig? Jag har gått med dig. Hur du? gott med dig. The nicest one on the block. Vad har du med dig? Är det någon som har en tändare? En lighter. Kan du gå snäll och gå till henne och säga att du vill ha en citronsyra? Det är liksom acid. And this is dope. Yeah, and then you take dope and coke. Hardened drug users like Patrick mix heroin and cocaine in search of a more powerful high. A so-called speedball. It's a dangerous cocktail that multiplies the risk of overdose. This is coke. This should be slaske, slaske coke. Patrick needs to shoot up between six and eight times a day to avoid withdrawal symptoms like stomach cramps, anxiety, and fever. So that's the heroin. Yeah. No. Since 2012, Denmark's drug consumption rooms have seen more than a million drug intakes and experienced 700 overdoses. Yet they haven't registered a single death. I don't enjoy uh, this. It's just something that I wish I could uh, start with. And uh, I believe I'm going to be able to do that. This is not the life I recommend for no one. But here in Denmark, I think you ha help people and uh, listen more. And your government is more liberal in that way that uh, 
places like this makes it more uh, controlled, uh, I think, and uh, less violent and uh, yeah, diseases and all that. Tina Lethansen has a master's in social work. She wrote her thesis about Swedish drug users in Copenhagen. I asked her what the drug scene is like in Sweden. It's sværere at få fat i stofferne, de dyre stofferne. Det er også sværere at få fat i rent værktøj, altså kanyler og pumper og så videre, og de ting man nu bruger, når man indtager sine stoffer. Det her det er en kanylespids, der er taget et billede af i en mikroskop. Og der kan du se her, hvor fin og spids og ren den er, inden den er blevet brugt. Og når den er brugt seks gange, nu står der seks fix, men det er faktisk, når den er taget ind og ud af huden seks gange, så er den jo helt smadret. Og det siger jo sig selv, jo mere man bruger en udlagt nål, jo større hul laver du i din blod, og jo større risiko er der for blodprop, større skader på dig selv generelt, større risiko for sygdomme. Michael Lodberg is a social entrepreneur who opened Denmark's first DCR in 2011. Når vi har et fixerum, så kan vi lige pludselig for første gang begynde at styre stofstenen en lille bitte smule. Fordi vi har skabt et meget, meget attraktivt sted, som er det sikreste sted i hele verden for en stofbror at indtage sit stof. Der er aldrig én eneste stofbror, der er død af en overdosis i noget fixerum i hele verden. Inden vi fik fixerum, blev der samlet mellem 8.000-12.000 brugte kanyler op om ugen herinde på Indre Vesterbro. Så det er et meget, meget lille område, og det er jo rigtig, rigtig mange brugte kanyler. I want to know how Patrick experiences life on the streets of Denmark. Here you have a lot of shelters where you can sleep and uh, you can uh, eat. Uh, you can eat food for free in many different places, and it's really easy. The only thing you need to do is you need to to work to get money to buy whatever coffee you take. Now I have to go to jail again, for maybe I have. To, I've been caught like 50 times for that. I think of three years you do this uh, four times every day. For over three years, and, you know, and then people think, yeah, what an idiot, he gets caught 50 times. But if you do it four or five times every day for, for over three years, of course you get caught. De svenskere, som færdes på stofstenen i København, er karakteriseret ved, at de er yngre end den danske målgruppe er udsatte på gaden. Udover det, så er de også overrepræsenteret i overdosisstatistikken. Til trods for, at det, det fremstår umiddelbart øh, udefra som værende en gruppe, der er meget udsat øh, og har det meget svært, så beskrev de faktisk selv at have det bedre i Danmark, end de havde i Sverige. Og det kan man jo som sundhedsfaglig person blandt andet undre sig lidt over til at starte med, jamen du, du sidder jo her enormt udsat og har ikke nogen rettigheder, og så fortæller du mig alligevel, at du har det bedre. Og det, det er jo meget interessant og meget tankevækkende i den grad. For hvad er det så, man kommer fra, hvis man føler, at man har det bedre ved at leve på gaden i et andet land? According to the EU's drug agency, Denmark has 57 drug-related deaths per 1 million citizens a year. In Sweden, that number is 100. It's the country with the second highest overdose death rate in Europe after Estonia. I want to understand why the Swedish system so rigidly sticks to its zero tolerance policy, despite the proven success of drug intake rooms. So I travel to Malmö to meet Per Einarsson, one of the politicians against DCRs. He's a Christian Democrat who sits on the health council in the region of Skåne. What is the general holding of stuffbrugers? The Swedish holding is that we will help them in the situation they are in, and in the most possible way that they will be free. At de skal frias helt ifrån uh, narkotika. Så du er imod fixerum? Ja, det kan jeg inte inte tänka mig. Vi ser jo, at et fixerum nedbringer overdosisdødelighed. Hvordan kan det være dårligt at lave et fixerum, når det redder liv? Ja, jeg tænker, at det, har jo, det er en vigtig del at redde liv, og vi vil få ned overdosen. Men vi vil også gøre det på et andet sätt. Jeg, jeg tænker, at vi, vi kan inte lyfte in det i finrummet. Uh, og säger här, nu kan du uh, injicera, varsågod, här finns en plats. Och sen samtidigt så har vi lagen som säger nej, vi säger stopp. Bliver man inte nöjd till att se in i som politiker när man liksom blir konfronterad med att det är svenska stoffbrugare som hellre vill bo på gaden i København, där de inte får hjälp till annat än att överleva från den ena dag till den andra, än att vara hemma i deras hemland och få hjälp till att komma ut av deras missbruk? Bliver man inte nöjd till att se in i och säga det här, det blir vi nöjd till att göra något med? Jo. Det berör mig starkt. Alltså jag, det får inte vara så att man så att säga, 
hitta en, till och med ett annat land för att Sverige har för hård attityd eller, eller vad, ja, jag vill veta vad, vad är orsakerna och vad är argumenten? Vad är det som har satt stopp för honom i Sverige? Var gick det snett? Var gick det galt? Ja. Det, det, den frågan måste vi titta på. För det är, det är inte rimligt. It's unlikely that Swedish drug users will stop coming to Denmark anytime soon. However, the situation for Swedish drug users is slowly improving. It's already easier to get access to clean needles. And in 2018, Naloxone, the same drug H17 uses to treat overdoses, became available in Sweden. But for now, the choice is clear for Chris, Patrick and the other Swedish drug users in Copenhagen. They prefer life in Denmark. <laughs>